Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I want to finally give my full review of The Last of Us Part 2. I wasn't able to finish it until last night, so I wanted to wait until I had everything said and done. Every, went through everything, got, you know, all the collectibles I could, every part of it, went through the dialogue, everything, before I could really give a clear and accurate picture of what I think when it comes to this game. Now, of course, I will state, you know, that I am going to be mildly biased. I loved the first game. It was one of my favorite video games ever. And, um, I've been very bipolar going into this game. I defended it and defended it, and then I got really angry <laughs> with some of the leaks. Like, I just got beyond angry, and I was like, I'm done defending this game. It's made me mad enough. Well, uh, a lot of what you heard is out of context, right? So once you put the context of the story all together, it actually, it, it does make sense. And you can go ahead and try to convince me I'm wrong or I haven't played enough games or something like that. But this is my opinion. So just understand, you, I, you are more than welcome to your own and I, you know, I'll defend your right to have your own. But I'm also, um, you know, allowed to have mine. So let's talk about this game as a whole. Um, I don't think there's a possibility. I, I, it ended up being 24 hours for my gameplay. So I don't think there's a possibility of me putting it all into one review. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do just an overview of what I thought of the game in this video. And then I really want to dive deep into some of the specific parts. So I'm going to break it up into story mode, right? So the first I'll talk, you know, up until and around Joel's death. And then, um... I want to do a separate video for Ellie's part, Seattle Day 1 through 3, Abby's part, Seattle Day 1 through 3, and then from there to the end. So I'm going to break it up into different videos, but this is just a general review of the game. Now, I have said before, it, it's very slow starting, right? The first four hours are slow, and you are going to get the repetitive mechanics of crafting, of getting ammo, of looking for supplies. Those things are all to be expected in this game. And we did it in the first. So um, some of the environmental stuff is gone now that we have the jump button, um, which ended up working okay, especially for um, the combat that came with Ellie because she was more sleek. She was quicker. She wasn't quite as slow as Abby. It worked well. Um, so the environmental puzzles of finding certain things were were a little bit less. Yes, you had to find a rope here or a plank there or a ladder there, but a lot of it was answered with that jump button, and I actually really like that because the environmental puzzles were the least, you know, favorite part of the original game. Now, let's talk about a little bit about the different factions and who we meet. The main ones is the um, Washington Liberation Front, which Abby does belong to, and the Seraphites, which Lev belongs to and Yara. Um, obviously, spoilers, I guess I should have said that in the beginning, but, um, you know, doing a review like this, definitely have to have it. So, let's talk about this as a whole. Um... My overall impression of the game after the first four to six hours was I was completely immersed in the story. I know a lot of people have problem with the story and that's okay. That's your right. But I was 100% um, unable to look away. I wanted to know what was coming next. Um, and, and it's slow between cutscenes, right? So... I wanted to know what was going to happen, when it was going to happen. Like, I was very impatient um, when it came to certain things. But that's just kind of how I am. So, we also, um, I, we got to talk about Joel's death, right? So, I did unfairly at one point in my other videos say that uh, I don't think him and Tommy would give their name. But, to be fair, Joel did give his name to Henry and Sam in the first game. And trusted them to bunker up for the night. So we are seeing an older, calmer, more mature, and stable Joel. And um, at this point, it, it made sense. The way that they 
um, portrayed it when they leaked these things was, oh, they just walked in and gave their name. No, they had been working with Abby at that point. So, and not only that, but she gave her name. Everybody did. So it did make sense. Was it a stupid decision? Sure. Of course it was. But, um, you know, at, it, it made sense in context. A lot of these things, now looking back, were very purposefully leaked the way they were <laughs> to really upset people because mm, you leak about um, half an hour of gameplay that really upsets people and that's the only part that's going to upset you in the entire game. I mean, the game's going to upset you. It's supposed to make you feel something. It's supposed to make you realize a few things and I think it's actually um, kind of an important story for the time we're in right now, right? We're seeing one group against the other and we're seeing both sides of the story realizing that this story is so much more than Ellie. This story is so much more than Joel. They're not the only people in this world. And I want to talk about world building, right? This is probably some of the best world building I have seen in a game. And the reason why I say that is obviously the graphics are fantastic. Obviously the way Seattle looks, the way, you know, the farmhouse looks, the way every area looks is beautifully and meticulously detailed. And not only that, but a lot of it in Seattle does feel very, it's linear game, but it does feel very open world. You're able to go into different stores, whether it's a coffee shop or a daycare or something like that, to get different supplies, diff different collectibles, a bunch of different stuff. And it makes that feeling of open world in a linear game make sense. And I really, really like that. Even though at some point, like, like I'm not going to lie, in the beginning, it was very tiresome, especially when you first got to Seattle. It was like repetitive, repetitive. I'm like, I just want to get into it. And again, that's the impatience within me realizing, you know, this, this is part of it. You got to go through this. So I really enjoyed, and I know I'm going to do a dedicated video to this. And I know a lot of people aren't going to like this opinion. I really, really enjoyed Abby. Abby was the best. And you're going to hate this. <laughs> she was the best character in the game by far. By far. We see her go from a soldier for the Washington Liberation Front. And that's why she looks the way she does. It does make sense. Obviously, they went a little overboard. But I think the fact that Ellie is so, you know, thin and nimble, um, they wanted to go opposite. Yeah, they went a little overboard. But Abby is, we see her go from a soldier to... Um, almost a maternal figure very you know quickly I mean 10 hours but um we see her go and we see her journey and we see the way she treats love and now I want to talk a little bit I know this is going to be all over the place and I apologize like I said I'm going to break it up a little bit better but there are certain things I want to mention let's talk about the SJW politics they're there you're I'm not going to lie they're there but when politics are done correctly they they are moving they make you feel things they work out okay and i've said this plenty of times about like detroit become human and that's the example i use because i streamed it um when sjw politics are done correctly they make you empathetic they make you realize you're not the only one in your echo chamber they make you think right so let's talk about the character love who was originally Lily, and he joins, he's with the Seraphites, who are absolutely not a transphobic Christian cult, but they are a cult. They are not Christians at all. They worship um, a female who is um, basically, it's just this whole society that is gross. Like, <laughs> they're very Amish like, but at the same time, they're very controlling. So, Lev came of age as Lily to wife up he was supposed to be a wife and it almost and I don't want to go into complete detail about this right now I will eventually but it almost makes you go damn like I remember when I was that age and then the reason I um think love character was so powerful to me because I remember at that age wanting to be a wife and mother that's what I wanted to grow up to be and I was always told whether it was at school or by um, my grandma or something like that no, no 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 that's not what you dream of being you dream of being 
you know, successful career woman, da 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 da. And I'm like, no, I wanna, I wanna find the man of my dreams. I wanna get married. I wanna have children. And and I was always told no. So I get why he's the exact opposite. Because at that age, I was that person. So uh, I'll go into more of that later on. But really, really great character. Same with his sister. His sister is so loving. Um, you know, obviously, most of these characters die. They do introduce a lot of characters to have them killed off. And that's okay. It makes sense. Um, I think one thing that um, I really, really enjoyed, you know, about this whole thing was the journeys that we see. So, Abby, we see her go from a soldier to, you know, a maternal figure, a mentor figure, an older sister figure. And then we see Ellie go from somebody that wants this revenge so badly she'll give everything up for it to at the very end, at least in my opinion, and I'm going to talk about the ending, um, when she's unable to play her guitar, she lets Abby go, which was the best choice, and I'll tell you why in a second, but um, when she lets her go, she leaves the guitar behind, and she heads out, right? Well, she's lost Dina, at least in my mind, that was kind of putting Joel to bed, putting that revenge to bed, leaving that guitar behind was, you know, Joel, he, her, she's always going to honor his memory and stuff like that, but she put that revenge to bed. Now, the reason why I say that was the only way to go about this is because Abby let her live twice, gave her the chance at life twice. Um, even after, you know, she killed her father, she killed, um, you know, all of her friends, she killed <laughs> all of the fireflies. Well, that was, you know, with Joel, but it was because of her. And, um, it, it really was the best choice. And I think a lot of it had to do with the character of love, because now we're going to see the same mentorship we saw with Joel and Ellie with, you know, you know, if we go for the trilogy of Last of Us. Um, with Lev and Abby. And then we still have a whole nother story that can be told about Ellie, um, getting to Dinah or getting, you know, to JJ and stuff like that. So I think it was the best ending we could have, you know, asked for. So let's talk about <laughs> the infected. Oh, the, I, you know, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to the infected, but the new, the new guy, Rat King, Holy shit, that is the hardest fight. Like, in the fact that they can, you know, rip stalkers off of them. I didn't expect that. I just did not expect to get that huge. I knew there was something new um, besides the Shamblers, which in and of themselves were hard enough. But my God, that Rat King was massive and massive and amazing at the same time. But it was, it was really hard. <laughs> I'm not going to lie there. But um, overall... Overall, this, I know a lot of people are dogging on the story. And what, what people don't seem to realize that only listen to bad things about this game is that that's not the only opinion out there. And it's not just SJWs that like this game. And the fact that I like this game doesn't make me some sort of corporate shell. It makes me human. It makes me realize that I can empathize with people that are different than me. It makes me realize that I can love a character that I originally hated. It makes me realize that I can admit when I'm wrong and give praise where it's due. Was it the best game in the world? Uh, 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 it's my favorite right now. <laughs> I was going to say no, but of course it's not going to be everybody's favorite game. But right now... It is mine, and I, you know, played my fair share of games. Um, it has something powerful <laughs> that a lot of games don't, and, and it just like the first one had powerful themes. Just like the first one had powerful moral choices for Joel. He had to choose, you know, I, there's no choice there, right? There really is no choice when it comes to saving Ellie in the first one, um, it, it, regardless but there were powerful choices that Ellie now had to make. Joel was making her choices for her before, and we see a lot of really, really heavy dialogue between them. She is not happy with Joel. She wanted her life to mean something 
um, by able to make a vaccine. And at this point in her life, you know, she felt like it didn't mean anything. Well, now maybe that she's put her hate, you know, her anger for Joel to bed. She's put her anger for Abby to bed. Now she'll be able to live a fulfilled life, hopefully. At least that's, you know, my interpretation. And I, like I said, I'm going to go into detail with all these little things I'm touching. But um, we see, you know, Ellie really is empathetic. But then again, she's not. She's not. She ditches Jesse up, you know, in the aquarium because she's so set on revenge. There are a lot of dumb choices she makes, all in the name of revenge. And now that she let Abby live, all of that is gone. All those stupid choices she made can be put to bed. So I really, really enjoyed this game. There are so much to this I want to talk about. I love the fact that we got these rattlers, right? We don't know anything about them. We got them at the very end in Santa Barbara. Um... And now that's, I'm assuming, going to be going more towards three because those are some sick, sick motherfuckers. But I will talk about all this stuff individually. But if I had to rate this game, you know, just like the critics do, I would say it's definitely a 9.5 out of 10. It, there's a few things in the beginning that were annoying, repetitive gameplay, stuff like that. But it, It all comes naturally. It all works. The story is moving and the story is showing us that even, you know, those people. So if you relate it to now, right? Uh, Most people know I'm right of center. And it makes you realize that the people, you know, left of center are definitely, you know, they definitely have a life. They have a story too. We all have a story. And it really teaches you, if anything, if anything you take away from this game, I think it's empathy. I think it's the fact that every single person has a story. Mm, Mine's different than yours. Yours is going to be different than your neighbor's. But we all have one. And sometimes they interconnect. And sometimes we just need to realize that we're all haunted in a way, right? So, I don't know. I will go through this individually. I really want to talk about Lev. And I really want to talk about Abby. um, And, you know everything I've seen with her, but I kind of want to do it where it makes sense. So we're going to talk tomorrow about, um, you know, up to the Joel death scene, at least um, for the most part. And then I am going to next week definitely be live streaming it. I will have a date in the next, you know, day or two, which day and which time so you guys can um, come or not. (laughs) But I know a lot of people aren't interested in the game, but I, I really would like to talk about it. So Regardless, I'm going to. Anyways, let me know what you guys think if you've played this game, if you've enjoyed this game, if you hate this game. Either way, let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. I want to give a huge shout-out to my Patreon and subscribe stars. You guys literally make this channel possible. Huge thank you to Cage the Mick, Robert Mick. Twiz, Black Knight Fool, Brucey, Chris Z, David L, David Rafford, Jeffrey Allen Carnes, Mighty Balls, Mike Buckner, Mizen Barbosa, Ruscar, Ryan Decker, Robert Hoffman, and Doc Holiday. You guys are absolutely amazing, and thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget on the way out to like as always if you enjoy the content and hit subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.